Welcome to the Reader Reveal, Episode 6. We are here with the one and only Coach Mike Seipot, um, Raider football coach. So thanks for being with us, Coach. No problem. I'm, I appreciate it. All right. So um, as you can see in the background, I got some, some of your football uh, memorabilia up here. Got your picture. I also was able to go through and um, found a little picture <laughs> of you playing the guitar. All right. Got two pictures here. Get involved. So um, you're a man of many talents. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, you were not able to participate in the drama production. Uh, we had uh, anticipated that that would be your breakthrough performance on the stage, too. So we, we know you, again, have a lot of talents. I know uh, uh, Miss Cahill and uh, Miss Mark State. That would have been one of my hardest performances to, to, to do, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, but you, you all, you're, you're push the athletes, so I'm sure you would push right through that and yeah. uh, do your best. So uh, start us off with telling us um, some of your background on coaching, you know, prior to North Brunswick. Um, well, I graduated from Wesley College in uh, Delaware in 2006, um, played there, learned a lot there. I actually, um, my junior year, I was out for the season with a knee injury, and I learned a lot from the offensive coordinator that year because I kind of helped make the cut-ups uh, and helped the team. And I learned a lot on the offensive side. I learned a lot about defense from the offensive side of the ball. And I did that weekly. I would I would do the cut-ups of did different teams. I would send it to the coach. I learned a lot just from just from doing tape and looking at tape all the time. You just learn different things about football. And then after that, um, you know, I was fortunate enough that Coach Z, who is still in the school, uh, it, uh, hired me as a linebacker coach in 2007, and I coached there. Uh, I coached in North Brunswick from 07. See, a lot of people forget that, that I did start my career in North Brunswick. So in, from 2007 to 2010, I was a linebacker coach, O-line coach, special teams coordinator, all that stuff. And then th one of the hardest decisions of my career was to move on and be a defensive coordinator for the first time. But I went uh, for two years at Metuchen, and I coached with my coach, Sal Mastretta for two years at Metuchen. Um, I left Metuchen after two years, went to Immaculata for three years, which was a different experience because it was a Catholic school and, you know, things are, it, it's different than a public school, but Immaculata at the time was a state power still. And um, I got to coach with Coach Filato, who's a Hall of Famer in the state of New Jersey. Um, um, and then after that, I came back to North Brunswick as a D coordinator for one year. And then the rest is history. I became the head coach. So bouncing around the different programs, how has that impacted your coaching style and what are the positives and or negatives from, from that experience? It was great because you learn, you learn different ways of, of coaching and you learn different things, um, not only on the field, but the behind the scene things of how to, how to talk to the kids in the locker room and how to organize practice and uh, things that work, you know, how to handle your staff and, and, uh, your equipment room, things like that. I mean, you. I think people don't realize how much really goes into it. You know, when to email a parent, how to email a parent. Um, but I got to learn from some great, you know, I learned from Coach Z, who's the most organized guy in the world. Um, I learned from Coach Mistretta, who is like a second father to me. And he's, you know, to me, a Hall of Famer. He's a state, one state championships, one of the best coaches I ever had. Um, playing football and Coach Filato was just such a he had such a you know presence to him that um, he j you just he earned people's respect just the way he talked to people and uh, you learn a lot about communicating and you know different bonds and there's just so much and I was in three different programs and even my time at Wesley you just you you build it all into one uh, program and you make your own so I think at the time, maybe eight years ago, maybe I thought I was ready, but I don't think I was ready to be a head coach. But then when I got that experience, I felt like I was ready. So when you first came to North Brunswick as the head coach, what was uh, you know, what were your goals? What, you know, I'm sure that you had many of them, but what was the your first year goal or goals? What did you want to accomplish or change? Just as a as a program point of view I, I wanted to change the culture and just 
I wanted to change the coach to player relationship where the kids feel like they're loved and, and cared for and, and that there's a trust between the coach and the player. And once I got that, and it didn't happen right away, like we, you know, it, we, we started on two that year, but they had to trust the process of what, how we were doing things and that we were doing it a certain way. And on top of that, to be in, involved with the community in, in some way, shape or form and with the alumni, because being from North Brunswick, I just felt that it was important that the kids know the history and know that they're not the only ones in it and that there's other people that have put on blue and gold for 40 plus years. Um, on the football field standpoint, I just wanted to make the playoffs. And I thought at the time, I probably thought I was crazy for thinking it, but I said, if we can just sneak in and be a lower seed, I think that that would build as it went on. And we wound up being a five seed that year and, you know, went six and two into the playoffs. And we had actually a very, you know, successful year. So um, one thing you talked about was obviously the community that's been big for you and for alumni. And I think, you see that in the support that the community has in turn given back um, because, you know, forming those relationships, not only with players, but with community members is huge. It does form a culture. What are, um, you talk about buy-in, you know, you needed kids to buy into what you were doing. Uh, why is buy-in important? And or how do you establish buy-in? Like how do you get kids to know that this is the way we're doing it and that this is a good way, this is the right way, and this is going to be successful? I think the kids at this age, I, I think they know if you're, if you're, a, uh, you know, a fib or not. Like, no, like the product, what we're putting on, what we're showing you and putting on the field is working. So there's a lot of times, a lot of examples that the things that we do on the field, they do translate onto the game or things that you do in the classroom translate to something positive. So they needed to see a, a, a cause and effect on, not only the classroom, but also on the field. And a lot of that was with organization. I think that I always said that organization equals success. So when they sell a practice plan up, they knew we meant business. If, if we went off of that somehow, I felt like they would have lost trust. So we were on them from day one. So, you know, we made a weight room program. We said, we want you to run, and we did it. Like, so a lot of things that we said, we backed it up with actions. And I think that that shows the kids right away that we meant business, and they wanted success. I mean, these kids were thriving for success. We took over a program that was 8-42. and 42. So I think any little change would have helped. But, um, you know, they needed to see the results, whether it was uh, lifting more in the weight room or getting faster or even when we got our first win. So it may have taken time, but they saw that there were results at the end. So what are the, um, what are the values that you instill in the players? Like what are some of the, I guess you can call them non-negotiables, you know, like what are the things that you expect every player to bring? Because we all know that players are different from skill set to, you know, ability, um, but there are intangibles that some athletes have that others don't, but there are also things that are just, we can all have, right? They're non-negotiables. What are those for your kids? Number one is always being on time. Um, uh, I, we always stress being on time, whether it's for a meeting, uh, whether like right now, even for the virtual th uh, meetings that we're having, I expect them to be on time and, and be in attendance. We, we preach attendance. Um, we preach effort because no matter how talented you are, um, that effort that you give in practice and football is different because you – really practice more than you play and that effort has to be there in practice so we we do a lot of drills where it is effort based it's not like you have to catch a ball and if not you fail it's are you running the football and we time them are they making it on time so a lot of things are are based on effort um we we see we do a trust thing before um before camp we always do a a, a together uh, classroom meeting about trust and we say who do you trust who do you kind of trust 50 50 and who do you not trust on this team and then we really talk about like well, why don't you trust this person and why are you the person that they don't trust so a lot of things like you said bill we really put obviously together because together is our slogan but also love and trust um it's a sport where you got to rely on the guy next to you more than anything 11 guys in the field have to do their job 
you have to trust the guy next to you. So I think that just saying it doesn't help. I think you, that's why we do those different exercises of trusting each other. Um, and, I, and, I, and, it's, and it's worked. Right. So what most people understand about sports is it's much deeper than just the athletic part. It's about those conversations you have in the relationships and having an open forum for kids to express themselves, to talk about the things that are bothering them on the team or otherwise, you know, and building a relationship with one another and also with their coaches, which gives that family feel, which in turn hopefully um, ends in, in success because everybody's top, willing to put a little bit more out there. And on top of the trust one, we also do uh, why you love football. And I think that's important. I'll, I'll go around the room and ask every single player and the coaches also do it. I'm like, there's a reason why you play football. You don't just say, well, I guess I'm going to go to practice now. I said, this is, you have to love this game because it's not easy and you want to keep it fun. But there's, and everyone has, everyone comes from different walks of life and there might be a reason why they love football or not. And I tell them to put it in their locker and if they're ever feeling a certain way, I want them to look back at that and remind them why they love football and why they're here. All right. So, so how do you, how does the, those things that you preach in football, how does it carry over to the classroom? Because um, obviously there needs to be um, something within the school day that is similar to football, right? There's got to be things that carry over from where well, you're learning this on the field, but this also translates into school and also your everyday life. What are those things? We always tell the kids, sit in the front row, be respectful, you know, be a good student, and ask for help. Teachers are in the school to help. So if you're lost with something, just like on the field, we, don't, we, we, we might not be able to reach everyone. But if you ask and come, we are glad to help. The same with a teacher. If you need help, you need to ask. Um, they, need to, they need to, especially we had seven guys sign to college. But if you look at those seven guys that went to college and went to go play football, they balanced playing a sport, being successful on the field, but also balancing the classroom stuff. And I feel like that's lost that sometimes athletes think that only the sport will get them where they need to go. And it's not true. They need to have that classroom uh, aspect in uh, along with the sport because both of them, you don't get one without the other. You need both. And for those guys that are going on and moving further in their career, they did do that. Um, and it's not easy and it's not for everyone, but if they find that balance, a lot of people will find that success. Um, we, we always say that I, I always tell the kids that if you want respect for me, you need to show respect. And it's the same in the classroom with the teachers and administrators and, you know, people in, uh, in the cafeteria, it just goes down the line security if you want respect, you need, to, you need to walk and talk with that respect, especially if you're a football player. We want them to be a certain way, um, respectful in the school. So, um, yeah, you, po you pointed out that you had seven this year, seven seniors going to play at the next level, which is not easy to do. And some of them really had to um, push at the end with their academics and, and, you know, rely on the help of teachers and guidance counselors and yourself and coaching staff. So um, tell us about the – I mean, let's be honest. There was a lot of work from you and your staff with college recruitment, right? I mean, we know we saw a lot of college coaches um, coming through. What is your involvement in helping those kids get to the next level? When the college coaches come in, it's almost like a resume. It's, a, it's like an in-person resume almost for me and the player. Sometimes I'll ask the player not to be in there right away, and they'll just say, well, what do you? What can you tell me about the player? Now, a lot of the questions aren't about the field stuff. It's about uh, what's their character. How are they off the field? How are they with their family? Uh, you know, who do they live with? And it's almost like a, a background check. Like they're just they want to know who they're getting, and they if they want to put money into this kid and this player, they want to get the best person available, the most qualified. So. They'll ask me a lot of questions like that. They'll always ask. The, one of the first things they ask is what's their GPA and what their grades are like. And they'll question bad grades. Why do they have this? Why do they have that? Um, they will ask them just about their personality. You know, what type of person are they? Are they talkative? Are they, are they fun? Are they a good locker room person? And because they, a lot of coaches and a lot of college coaches, if they did their job, they watched their film already. They've seen what they could do on the field because mm -hmm. they wouldn't be there if they didn't. Um, and then they would usually bring the kid in and they would really ask the same questions. And sometimes they'd want me to stay in there. And it's usually, you know, asking questions and just seeing the kid's comfort level and, 
and um, they, they want to ask about their family and, and uh, what they enjoy and what they don't like, and they kind of go from there. And when they leave, they give them a bunch of information. And uh, usually the people that get fouled up are the ones that they continue with. So, um, you know, doing all this, obviously we, we see co college coaches come in and you pointed out what they ask and what they're looking for. And a lot of times it's, it's off the field stuff because they've already seen that. What, um, let's talk about that for a second for future, the future Raider football player and all athletes, North Brunswick, and anybody who watches this. You know, a lot of times there's this idea that people, players want to go Division One, right? They want to go play somewhere or they, they have this preconceived notion of where they should be. And sometimes the people who reach out to them and inquire and are interested aren't, I don't know what you'd say, in, in the mindset of the athlete or the parent, maybe where they should be going. How do you address that, um, you know, where you want to go versus what's a realistic and um, beneficial opportunity? There's so many – there's so many things that go into going to a college it's not like I scored 14 touchdowns and I should be going D1 well it doesn't work that way are your grades D1 people forget that your grades need to be D1 and there's certain requirements for division one and people have to realize going one double A is extremely hard it's extremely hard and the percentages are low we were fortunate we had two players Miles uh, Bailey's going to Central Michigan Leon Lowry's going to Syracuse but that's not for everyone, and it doesn't mean you stink as a player. It's just all the stars have to align. Um, you have to have the right grades. You have to be the right fit for that team. You might be a great quarterback, but they might, be, they might not be looking for that type of quarterback that you are. Um, uh, obviously, your, your resume is really on your film. Are, what are you doing on the field? Do you walk to a play? Do you take plays off? Are you giving full effort every play? Are you running sideline to sideline? Those are the things coaches want to see. Not so much your stats. They want to see if you're losing in a game, are you throwing your hands up in the air? Are you throwing your helmet on the ground? Are you cursing at the coaches? Like they, they want to see things like that because they want good, mature people in their program more so than a star athlete. They want good people in their program, people that are going to be beneficial and good for their, for their colleges and their program and universities. Um, so, yes, it does help that you light it up on the field and you have all the yards and you score and this and that, but there's so much more behind that. And um, Leon, for example, was doing all that on the field, but his grades just weren't there and he had to get his grades up and he had to get his grades up and he finally got it. And then it's like, okay, now you're going to get my offer. So all of it kind of matches up. And I feel like some kids like, well, I don't want to, D3 because it's it stinks or I don't want to go one double A or division two there's so many great schools out there no matter what division it is I played division three football division three football is college football and it's it's no different there is a difference with that in one double A obviously but it's college football and uh, you could be successful there and have a great career and there's nothing wrong with that and some players have to um, realize that and I think the mistake is that they, they make a mindset in their mind that they are this type of player instead of just playing a game, having fun, and just kind of letting the cards fall where they, where they go. Yeah, and I think it's important that athletes also know that sometimes it's about where you're going to go where you're going to play. You know, you want to go somewhere where you're going to get in and play and where you can get an education. And sometimes there's money in, in another school or school that you initially didn't have on the table and you realize, hey, I can get – full ride or I can get 50% of my college education and the, the cost of college education as it is, you know, sometimes you just need to make a realistic decision for, for your future and say, this is going to be best because I'm getting the education and I'm also going to play a little bit and you can form those bonds and have a great time at different levels. You know, not always think that division one is where everyone has to go or where everyone can physically uh, go. Right. right. Um, what, what is your, um, what is your connection with youth football in North Brunswick and how important is the youth are the youth programs in districts, not just North Brunswick, but what's your philosophy and belief of the youth program? They're, they're so important. And that was, that was one of the first places I visited when I first became a head coach was to go to the Adams AC and the Pop Warner program, because I wanted them to be on the same page with us. Um, we held clinics for them. We gave them, 
playbooks. We said, please ask questions. We invited them to camps. We invited them to practices. Get a pad and pencil. Come learn what we do. It doesn't necessarily have to be exactly what we do, but even if you get some lingo or maybe a drill or – because it is different, and, and Pop Warner and even middle school should still focus on having fun and having kids come out for football, all right? It shouldn't be so much stress like, yeah, winning is fun. It is fun at that level. We also – and we still continue to tell them, stress the fundamentals. Don't worry about the plays and formations. Worry about the fundamentals. Are they blocking? Are they tackling? Because even at our level – we still do blocking and tackling every day. Mm -hmm. We focus on the little things that you learn as a Pop Warner North Brunswick Indian. I was a North Brunswick Indian, so it does mean something to me. I played in the Pop Warner level here. We didn't have middle school football um, way back when when I played. But now that we have it, and Coach Urban does a great job at Linwood. He does what we do. He runs what we do. We do. So when those eighth graders become freshmen, oh, I know this formation. I know this play. I know this lingo. And that's where it really starts. And if you look at – a lot of successful programs in the state, their feeder system and their Pop Warner system are on the same page. And, yeah, sometimes it is tough, and um, it's going to continue to to be tough. But that's just the way as, – as soon as that bond stays, there's so much success that comes with it. I think, I think we're going in the right direction with that. And I think that um, – and not necessarily you want to be a tyrant and you go down there and say, you have to do exactly what I want. But it just – you want that – the same thing with the community. You want that bond. You want those kids coming to our games. I have our guys on Sundays go to the Pop Warner game. They, they, they need to see that we care and then they care. And I think that goes longer than uh, – a, a further way than just talking about X's and O's with those coaches. Yeah, I mean, those are great points. The relationship you form with community members and Pop Warner coaches and the, um, you know, the heads of Pop Warner and all that is very important. This is for all sports, right? It's not just for football. You know, to understand lingo and lang the language that your terminology and drills, more importantly, the fundamentals, right? We need to have a basic set of fundamentals so that you can then take it to the next level. And I think a lot of times um, the biggest for adults thing to do is put your ego aside, right? Yeah. A lot of times there's ego. It's about, well, I won this and I won that. Well, okay, well, if you have the best athletes and you, you pull the best players, you're going to win at that level. But that doesn't mean the kids are going to have the skills, fundamentals, and the mindset that is needed at high school and beyond. So trusting one another like you trust your players and like you ask your, your players to trust you needs to happen through the adults in, in the community as well. And number one is always ego, I, I think, you know, my experience. And because you have those athletes, you should never – fall upon not going over the fundamentals and say, oh, we got this. We're, we're, you know, we have all the athletes in the world. We can win. That's not necessarily true. You know, we fell short in the state semifinals. We had a great team. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes that's the way it is in, in, in life and in sports, but you have to focus on those fundamentals because at the end of the day, the other teams either tackling better than you, blocking better than you, and that's where you kind of have to fall upon. And, um, you know, on the community part, you want those kids and those parents to see a face. They know who Coach Sidepoint is. They know who Coach Brown is. They know who Coach Byram is. You want them to know you by name and have that relationship and be able to talk to you. Right. And, and also it would be nice to those, those other programs also check on those kids, how they're doing in school, you know, what are they – so that they, they hear it from more than just teachers and, and their parents. But, you know, everyone is on that same page, and that's that community bond. All right, so to wrap it up, what are your goals um, – for the future? Like, what are you looking for this year? Uh, let's just stick with this year. You know, we, I, I said, I, I remember back when, you know, I saw with, sat with Dr. Zukowski, um, you know, taking the job. I said, my goal is going to be to make the playoffs every year. I, I just think that's important. I think that any great program will always be there. And that if we can make the playoffs every year, I think that's a good sign of a great program. Uh, whether you win it or not, because people don't realize it is very hard to win a state championship. It's hard. And uh, some people make it look easier than others. But um, I'm happy, you know, with the success that we've had. Um, I want to continue to success for this year. I love this team. Um, we have a young group. And there, there's some really superb athletes on this team. And uh, I think they're very good competitors. And I do believe we are a playoff team. And um, they always say rebuild or, or, or reload. And I, I just feel like with this town and the players that we have, we will always reload 
as long as you're getting coached the right way and the kids put in the work. I, I, I don't fall see us uh, falling off the map uh, as a football program and uh, continue success. That's great to hear. And we also look forward to a lot of these kids continuing on to college and getting some scholarships or opportunities to play. Um, that's big as well. And you've done a great job with that. And, um, you know, your success obviously on the field um, speaks for itself too. So we appreciate all the things that you've done to make North Brunswick football what it is at this point. Looking forward to the future and, um, you know, wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you. I want to thank all my coaches because if it wasn't for all those guys helping me, none of this would happen. Those guys worked their butts off 24-7 for, for us and the program and the kids. So they right. have to give them thanks to them. Yep, thanks to all the coaches. Um, Coach, thanks for taking the time to come on. All right. You got it. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.